Welcome back, and I've got a really unusual magnetism experiment to show you today. It's one you've probably all noticed subconsciously, but you've never really thought about, and it's called the Hallback Effect. Now, I know you all know that magnets have two poles, a North Pole and a South Pole. And you might remember from one of my earlier videos on magnetism that if the two poles are the same, they repel. And if the two poles are opposite, like this, they attract together. But there's an effect I'd like to show you in a minute, which you might have noticed, and it seems to defy all of this. So, I think we're pretty sure that magnets have two poles and must have two poles. So a normal bar magnet, when you stick things to it and sort of pull bits off in between, you'll notice that the paper clips stick to either side. They stick to the north and south poles. But what if we do the same or something similar with a fridge magnet? So here's the pretty typical kind of fridge magnet you'd expect a physicist to have on their fridge. And you can see the magnetic material on the back. And the effect I wanted to show you is a very strange one. If I simulate the fridge door with a, a ruler, sticks perfectly. But what happens if you try and stick the fridge magnet on face into the fridge? It doesn't stick at all. It always will stick on that side, but not on the other side. Now, this isn't because there's a plastic layer. Um, I can show you this in two ways, but one of them is just to put the magnet in a plastic bag and the magnetic field will permeate the plastic bag. So there must be something rather odd going on here. Have we made a magnet with only one pole? So just to recap, the fridge magnets only stick on the fridge one side, but not the other side. And I'd like to show you a different way of demonstrating that it really isn't the plastic that stops the magnetism getting through to the metal of the fridge. You remember the paper clips we had earlier. I've got a fairly strong magnet here. Quite a thick plastic tray. And if I just tip it upside down, they stay in quite happily. And if I remove the magnet, out they come. So it's not the plastic that's causing the magnet to appear as if it's only got one pole on one side. So the effect you're seeing here is an interesting one, and it's called the Hallback effect. It was discovered by John Mallison in 1973, and then sort of rediscovered, um, found out as well independently, by uh, Klaus Hallback in the 1980s. And he knew that he could do something with magnets individual magnets by stacking them together to make it appear as if there was only one pole. Now, the explanation for this one is not an easy one, so I'm going to try my best. We notice with the fridge magnets that we appear to have a pole on one side and not on the other side. That's not exactly true. If we were to measure the strength of the magnetic field on one side, it would be extremely strong. And on the other side, it would be present, but much weaker. And what we need to know is that a fridge magnet is made up of bits of iron dust that have been sintered together, sort of made into a kind of a tile. And each little bit behaves like an individual magnet that can be magnetised in a particular direction. And this is the key to explaining the Hallback effect. So, knowing that the fridge magnet is made out of tiny little individual magnets, I'm modelling them here with these cubes, and the north pole is red at the bottom, and the south pole is the uh, uncoloured bit at the top, the black bit, as it were. So, uh, what happens if we push these three magnets together and hold them in that position? Well, we've got a north pole all the way along the bottom, and that will stick to the fridge door, and we've got a south pole all the way along the top, and that will also stick to the fridge door. So this can't be how the individual magnets are arranged in a fridge magnet. There must be something more interesting going on. So here goes for the Hallback effect, and this is really clever. I'm going to simplify it a bit, but I'm trying my best here. So 
What if we magnetise these individual bits of iron in different directions? In other words, we magnetise that one going across the page and this one going across the page and the other one going down. Now, what you'll notice here is we've got three different directions of magnetic field. And the simplest way of thinking about it is we've got all norths along the bottom at that position, so that will stick well. But at the top, we've got a north next to a south next to a north, which means the magnetic field, instead of coming out of the poles and out into space, will travel across the gap and it won't fringe out to where my hand is. So at any distance here, the field is much, much weaker. In other words, we've got a much stronger pole at the bottom and a much weaker one at the top. And it's the strong pole area that sticks to the fridge and the weak end that won't stick on the door. And that's the Horback effect. So you can now see that any magnet that uses the Horback effect isn't a single pole magnet. Neither is it uh, one magnet. It's actually a whole series of magnets with their poles pointing in different directions. There's actually a twist in them as you travel along the solid magnet. And that has the effect of creating areas of very weak field on one side and very strong field on the other side. In other words, it's not as if you've got two poles, but you've got the additions of different poles. So now you know why fridge magnets have a strong magnetic field on one side and an extremely weak one on the other. So I hope you enjoyed that video. Do try it at home, peel the fridge magnets off the fridge, especially the very thin ones and turn them around and see if they stick. Many thanks to Michael for encouraging me to make this video and I look forward to seeing you again next time. <laughs>